Hello, welcome back to Bet Builders on Free Super Tips. I'm Statman Dave and I'm joined by Will Brazier. We're going to be talking all things Premier League this weekend to give you all the bets that we build for game week 19. First up, Will, welcome to the show. Manchester United, top of the Premier League. Yeah, I've spent two hours with you on the train this morning, Dave, and that's all you've been talking about. So it's great just to talk about it a little bit more. Excellent. It's game week 19, of course, going to be discussing Arsenal, Chelsea, Spurs and, of course, Manchester United, Liverpool, the big game of the weekend. If you want to check out any more tips, go over to freesupertips.com. They've got lots of good tips over there as well. Before we dive into the action, though, let's jump into our bets from game week 17. That was the last time that we were building bets. We had three winners. Wow. I picked one in the Sheffield United versus Crystal Palace game. Nice. We had Rory going absolutely big in the Brighton Wolves game and free super tips in the Manchester United Villa game. You won last time, apparently. Yes, thank you, David. I just wanted to get that in there. Last time I was here, I called a big 14-1. to 1. <laughs> Burnley to beat Arsenal at the Emirates under 2.5 goals. Um, when I'm on, let's talk money. First up, we've got the Black Country Derby. It's going to be a big game for Big Sam. He needs some points. Not picked up many for West Brom yet, of course, like a draw with Liverpool, but he's facing a Wolves side that just lost to Everton 2-1. I think it's time for Big Sam to get his first victory. Uh, not for me. I mean, he's already talking about trying to overhaul the squad, which in January is very hard to do. Spend a lot of money, which West Brom probably haven't got. So I think this could be the first time Big Sam fails to get a team out. Wow. Relegation. Wolves, of course, have been a bit of hit and miss this season. Raul Jimenez has been a massive miss Let's check your bet straight away. Let's dive in straight away. Two-footed. Who are you backing in this game? Um, I do feel like West Brom will lose, but Wolves haven't actually been that quite decisive have they, in the games that they've played. Um, so I've gone for the double chance and under 2.5 goals. I think it's going to be very, very boring. I do like that bet in terms of uh, Premier League sides. Only Fulham, West Brom, Burnley and Sheffield United have scored fewer goals than Wolves in the Premier League this season. And of course, they're facing a side West Brom, who are also in that statistic. So, under 2.5 goals, I like that. The double chance, sitting on the fence a bit there, Will. But you think Wolves could nick it if it's going to be any side? Yeah, I do. Just It's mainly because West Brom have been so poor, but Wolves haven't been that great either. So, And when you're in a derby, Dave, even without the fans there, anything is up for grabs. So It is up for grabs. Let's move on to my bet. I'm also back in the draw and under 2.5 goals. I don't think it's going to be a classic. So, maybe this is the time when you go and do your shopping. Let's move on to free super tips bet build as well and see if they've gotten anything different there. Maybe a West Brom win. They've got Wolves to win the game and Pedro Neto anytime. Who's been their bright spot this season? Yeah, exactly. I mean, the, the Jimenez thing speaks for itself. Obviously, it'd be great to get him back as soon as it's possible. But yeah, Neto. I mean, he needs to do it a bit more, a bit more regularly for me, Dave. But apart from that, there's shine still a, still and a, signs. Still a young player making his making his name in the Premier League. Goals and assists. He's so, done pretty well this season. But I do like that bet. But that is backing. Uh, the home side, always going to be a danger with Wolves' form. Next up, a hipster's wet dream. Leeds versus Brighton wow. in the Premier League. Two teams that are in the bottom five in terms of goals conceded. This has got the potential to be game of the weekend. When well, you say a hipster's wet dream, I think it's a Statman Dave's wet dream as well. Uh, two teams that, you know, as a neutral, they always bring fun, entertainment. And uh, I know if you supported them, it's a bit hit and miss. Maybe more if you're Brighton, but hopefully there should be goals. What do you make of Leeds? Defeat to Crawley in the FA Cup with a pretty strong team, but they've given us such you know, classic Premier League ties. The, the, the 5-2 in Newcastle, the, the 6-2 defeat to Manchester United. I'm still back in this Leeds hype train. Yeah, I'm back in the Leeds hype train. I mean, it's all or nothing, isn't it? It's, uh, it's either the, the, uh, a, a convincing win or it's a, sort of a, a massive defeat, but it's entertaining. It is entertaining. I thought the game against Spurs, the last Premier League game, was more of... Them making mistakes. Mesley had a stinker for the first goal. I just thought it was. It just felt like they were forcing things, and they need to be a little bit more calm, a little bit more relaxed. I think a goalkeeper in January for Bielsa could be absolutely massive. Let's dive into the bets, though. Let's see who you're backing. You back in Leeds? You back in Brighton? Let's have a little look. I've gone to Leeds to win the match. Paddy Bamford to score. It's sort of your quintessential 2021 bet. Paddy Bamford in and out of the goals, but. I mean, he's been doing it in the Premier League, which is something that's been held against him to start with. Um, and Brighton, I mean, the stats would say that they should be higher up, Dave, as you will tell mm. me, but they ain't. And it's a Leeds win for me. I think they struggle in the final third. I think they have a lot of possession. 
They create good chances, but not high quality chances. I think that's a big, big thing with their side. They need to be working on that because if they keep underperforming in that metric, they're going to have problems this season. And we've got to be brutal honest with Hoff. I like the Patrick Bamford uh, to score any time. He's got the best XG since the start of December of any striker. You knew that. You threw that in the bet. Let's jump into my bet. We're popping down for another Leeds United win. So looking at the stats, Leeds have been involved in 24 goals in their last five games at 4.8 goals per game. But Brighton... So poor in front of goal, and we've got actually gone under 4.5 goals. So let's move on to free super tips bet for this game. Let's see if they're going to go Leeds, they're going to go Brighton, they're Ooh. actually going to go with a draw, Mopay to score any time, and Bamford any time. I can't see that. I mean, Malpe's been in and out of the team for one or two reasons. Don't think that's all injury as well. And even you mentioned with, with the goals coming in... Um, He's not been convinced with the keeper. Matty Ryan's been out for form as well, which you don't really see with keepers. So I think if anyone's going to win it, it's going to be Leeds, not Brighton. To London for West Ham versus Burnley. Bit of a match-up here. David Moyes versus Sean Dyche. Sean Dyche in these ties. Four wins, ten goals scored. David Moyes, zero wins, one goal scored, two draws. It's a dicey masterclass, isn't it, Dave? That's what you're predicting. And uh, if we get to my bet as well, I think I've reflected that with, uh, with my prediction. Well, let's dive straight into the bet then. That's what we want to do right now. Let's go and see what you're backing in this game. you got Burnley draw double chance of 5-6. to six. You came at the start of the show and said that you were picking the big ones, the 14s to 1, the 20 to 1. But why have you gone so defensive here? I just think it's two teams that you can't really say have had a rich vein of form. I don't think anyone has in the Premier League really, have they? But especially Burnley and West Ham, very Jacqueline and Hyde. But, I mean, you were telling me the Sean Dyche number's on the way down. And I think, you know, when you've got your number over someone, you know, Ollie over Pep, um, maybe Sean Dyche over David Moyes. Not quite as glamorous, but still all in the Premier League. Not quite as glamorous. I also think, you know, you're looking at Burnley and... How difficult they're to, to play against at times. The two centre-forwards, Barnes and um, Chris, Chris Wood. Wood, are just horrible to play against. Vidra came off the bench against Manchester United, had a few chances. Could be used from the start. So not quite like that, but I do think there's a... Sean Dash has got a hoodoo over David Moyes. Let's jump into my bet. I'm also backing Burnley, but I'm just backing Burnley to win the game. Nice. No double chance here. We've gone Chris Wood any time. Chris Wood is underperforming the expected goals at the moment. He's due some goals. He's getting the chances. He's just not taking them. Yeah, I mean, I remember watching the Everton game. He was through on goal, and if it wasn't for a great save from Jordan Pickford, he'd have had one then. So... And especially with his physical presence, then back post headers or just in and around the box, it's, his time will come. His time will come. You know, if he can pull on to Aaron Cresswell, a left back by trade, playing centre half at times, but also at left back at other times, dependent whether Everton played back three, back four. I think that's the avenue. The New Zealander drifting onto the back stick, target man esque header at the back post. Love that. It might not count though, after we saw Harry Maguire's goal unfortunately ruled out against Burnley. Move on. But let's move on to the next bet. Of course, from FST, they've gone Burnley draw double chance and under 2.5 goals in the game. I've got a stat for you to Go back on. that one up. Hit me, Dave. So in terms of, uh, let's, let's take the Premier League from the start of December. Burnley have conceded just four goals. Wow. Only Southampton, Villa and Man City have conceded fewer goals than Burnley. So they're actually defensively massively in form. Well, I mean, until you said that stat, that's not something I associated with Burnley this season. So... Uh, the, the numbers are there and maybe you know you like to sort of go under under the waves and sort of creep up at the right time a bit like Jaws it's West London derby time as Fulham face Chelsea Chelsea have been in pretty poor form in the last six games only beating West Ham losing to the likes of Everton Wolves Arsenal and Man City yeah. is there a problem for Frank Lampard right now there's, yeah, there's something not right, is there? And I think the most shocking of those defeats was the, probably the start of the bad run, which was that Arsenal game. Because Arsenal were, you know, people were talking about them as relegation candidates. And then they play against Chelsea and all of a sudden it sort of turns around for them. So it's hard. I mean, people, I mean, there was rumours that Avram Grant might be coming in to help Frank Lampard. So good God uh, above. <laughs> 2020 has been a little bit crazy. But of course, Ziyech is back in the side. He'll obviously help there. True. Callum hudson Doy has been their, probably their best player over the last month. I think a lot of the thing with Chelsea is, well, is, is just to go back on it as well, is like nobody knows the philosophy of Chelsea. which The identity. Yeah, um, which I mean, it's, the key, it's the buzzword for 2021. So I don't know if that is the major problem. It's, he seems to have them going at some stages, but hopefully he's not sort of like an Alan Pardew character who can't stop the slump. Can't stop the slump. Scott Parker has stopped the slump. Though. They've had some good results in, in recent weeks. He was fuming after that Premier League game was rearranged with Spurs. 
Um, but they've shown some resilience. A little bit of a kind of counter-attacking formation moving away from their possession game from last season. Has Scott Parker got enough to beat Frank Lampard, though? Um, I Well, I think if we reflect on my bet, Dave, I think I've actually gone for a draw. Yes, I have. Oof. Beautiful transition nice, there. Nice, very nice. Uh, under 2.5 goals. I think that just reflects the sort of Chelsea front line, not firing. Ziyech might be back, though, so that could change mm. things. Um, but, yeah, very low-scoring draw for me. There's been a few 1-1s that Fulham have been involved in recently, but I'm back in Chelsea. Nice. I think Chelsea are good with, against these weaker sides. They've struggled. You know, the teams we mentioned before, we reeled off the likes of Everton, Wolves, West Ham, Arsenal, Villa and City. All very competitive this season. You'd all say probably all those sides will finish top half or just around the you know, 11th, 12th in the Premier League. They've done well against these weaker sides. I think Fulham fit into that bracket. So that is why I'm going with Chelsea to win to nil. And also, Timo Werner, any time. You've got to keep backing him. him. Yeah, yeah you got to keep backing him. Uh, since the start of December, he's ranked 13th in XG in the league. That's not bad. But Pulisic as well could be an outside option. I went with Werner because he's my brother. But Pulisic, if people at home want to jump into that, he's ranked 12th in terms of XG since the start of December. So having a bit of a good run, both players. Nice like that. So let's move on to FST's bet as well for the game. They've gone Fulham draw double chance under 2.5 goals. Kind of reflecting what you've gone down the line of. Yeah, I think like you said, Fulham have got that identity now in the Premier League, which is that sort of counter-attacking play. And with Chelsea sort of stuttering and flattering to, flattering to deceive, I think this is where Fulham could get out. Mm. Quite like the draw, quite like the 1-1 draw, which is obviously what we're insinuating here. But I think with Chelsea... I think they've got the options back. I think that's something that they've not had this season is like all the players that they bought fit. Yeah. The likes of Kai Havertz is, is now fine. You know, you're looking at Pulisic coming into form, as we previously mentioned, uh, you know, with Ziyech back. Hudson Adoy looking good. Giroud's always going to score goals when he plays. I think Chelsea have got that sort of squad is kind of back to full strength in a way. Yeah, definitely. I think, well, when the squad is popping as well, I think, was it Seville they went away to with yep. the second string team? Giroud got a hat trick. So, so four. It, four. So when it is popping, it is popping, but um, it's not going to be popping this weekend. Next up, Leicester City versus Southampton, the battle of the English bagsmen. Vardy versus Danny Ings. Who comes out on top in this one? Well, uh, for me, there's one team that have really just... I'm just not fell in love with, that's quite a strong word is love, Dave, but there's a team that have caught my eye and sort of, you know, I've just been watching from afar, glancing in. Is that a team coached by an Austrian, Ralph Hassenhut? It certainly is, Excellent. Dave. Um, I, yeah, I think they've been brilliant this season and another one of those teams, I mean, I'm a fan of a championship team, so when it's Premier League, it's free reign for me, but yep. sort of put them in that bracket of Leeds, Villa, Southampton, if they're on the telly, I'm watching them because they're quite exciting. Very exciting side. Well, in terms of the two forwards uh, since the start of last season, Jamie Vardy is the top scorer with 34 goals since the start of last season. Ings has got 29, both of them. But the styles of both teams, I think, have been really good. Both probably suit playing on the counter-attack a little bit. You know, Leicester have moved away from this, you know, possession domination to looking better in the bigger games where they've got to play on the break with Harvey Barnes, with Jamie Vardy, with James Madison, who's back in form. Yeah, and I think that was really prevalent in that Newcastle game as well, where I know they've been doing well away from home, but when it gets down to those sort of games where you think they should win, they've sort of been flattering to deceive in those games. So it was great to get for them to get the three points at St James's. Mm, showed a bit of resilience that we haven't kind of seen yeah. with, with Leicester City. Let's dive into the bet straight away. Are you going to go with Southampton or Leicester? I've gone for it. This is my probably most convincing bet An of the day. 18-1, to one, I like it. Leicester home form, absolutely trash. Uh, Southampton in the form of their lives at the moment. Danny Ying sort of getting back to that form that we saw last season. And I just feel that... If they get the first goal, which is the way this bet is flowing, I think they'll get another goal on the counter-attack, which they love to do. I think one of the big things with Southampton as well is they kind of... Leicester will try and play out. Yeah. Southampton are fantastic at pressing high up the pitch. We've seen them catch many teams over the last few seasons and the Ralph Hassenhutl doing that. And Danny Ings seems like the guy that kind of can lead that, but also finish the moves off. The goal that he scored against Liverpool from that set piece. James Ward-Prowse, Danny Ings, that was absolutely superb. 18-1, to 1, you are going for the away side, but I do like that bet. If Southampton win, it's going to be convincing. Let's jump over to my bet, though, because I have gone Leicester City. Wow. And Jamie Vardy any time. Where are you going completely opposite? Gone the complete opposite. I do think Leicester City starting to really see. I think the, the, the important thing for this game is who scores the first goal. Yeah. If Southampton nick it, they can sit deep and break. Leicester nick it, they can sit deep and break. So it's similar sides, aren't they? Very, very similar. In, in a sense of they probably prefer that kind of counter-attacking element. To, Jamie Vardy is probably the best counter-attacker in the league. You're looking at the, the space behind Vestergaard, who's not notoriously fast. 
could be an interesting option. That's why I've gone Leicester and Vardy any time. Uh, let's jump over to free super tips and see what they've got for the game. I like that. That is a, that English bagsman. English bagsman. 34 goals, 29 goals since the start of last season. I like it at 10 to 3. That's a corker. Yeah, penalty set pieces could come into play as well. And, it, and like, look at Ings, not even on the free kicks, but War has got him in his mind just for a little cheeky one on the near post. On to Aston Villa versus Everton. Everton are a very weird side. At one point they were title contenders, then they weren't. Now they sit four points off the lead. Are they still in the bracket? I think just for what you've said there, where they've had the title form, then dipped off, I just don't think they'll have that consistency to, to be up there. But I think I spoke about that Burnley game, they weren't convincing, and then they went on a week where it was it Arsenal, Chelsea, um, and another big team in there that they beat. Wolves. Wolves. So not maybe for maybe a little flirtation with the Champions League places, but not a title run for me. Not a title run. I think one player that's been massively important to them, Calvert Lewin, who's now out injured, he's yeah. going to be a massive miss. They played Gilfie Sigurdsson through the middle against Wolves. Do you expect that again? Or maybe Richarlison coming into that position? Well, look, I mean, I know Wolves haven't exactly been tearing up trees like they did last season, but to go to Molyneux without a striker and get a 2 1 victory, I think uh, Carlo will be very happy, and yeah, why not? Yeah, why, why not? Jack Grealish, of course, is the guy that's grabbing the limelight. Aston Villa have been directly involved in the Premier League goal every 113 minutes. That has a superb record for a midfielder that doesn't play for one of the traditional big teams. Yeah, I mean, he, t he puts Villa on his back, but this season he's had the sort of supporting cast that have seen them propel up the league. And let's not forget, they've got two games in hand at the moment, so it's a bit of a false position. So even if they can win those, I mean, God, sorry, I just nearly collapsed speaking about uh, Villa maybe challenging for Europe. I just was thinking about a false nine, Aston Villa being a false <laughs> nine. You know, our minds work in very strange places. Let's dive into your bet, Will, straight away and let's see what you've got. You've got Villa to win the game, both teams to score and Grealish to score any time. So this prediction was made before Everton turned up trees at Wolverhampton. I thought okay. Calvert-Lewin was such a big miss, but you know, I'm backing against the fine Italian manager. Um, so Villa at home... The big one for me, Dave, was the Crystal Palace game. You know, Villa down to 10 men and they still go on to win 3-0. He's got a tune out of uh, Anwar El Ghazi as well. Grealish not been on the score sheet as much as he was at the start of the season. So uh, I just think Everton are going to run out of steam. Lots of games. And that's why I'm going for Villa. Nice. We could also see Grealish maybe return to the left-hand side. Barkley into number 10. That will get a better goal, a goal scoring output that's the from, big one. Yeah. from um, Jack Grealish. I do like that. But I've got Everton. I've just got Everton. I think that was a really resilient performance against Wolverhampton Wanderers. And I think that is why they're going to win this game as well. It's going to be a... I could see it a real sort of slog fest in a sense of one team will grab the lead, then it will return. You could see a 3-2, like a Premier League classic. But I've got Everton to win the game. Richarlison any time. The big thing why I'm saying Richarlison, his ability in the air is very, very good. Luca Dean got an assist against Wolves with a really good cross from the left-hand side. He's back, means goals are back for Everton. And, of course, James Rodriguez. So I think the creativity of those two players, we saw that link up again, that second assist pass. Rodriguez to Dean, Dean to goal scorer, goal time. It's going to be Richarlison this time. You don't even need to say anything. Just, just convince you. Sorry, sorry. I've convinced you. But let's move on to free super tips bet because we were already convinced about my bet. They've got Everton to win the game at over 2.5 goals. Yeah. Um, well, I've backed Villa, so I don't agree with that. So I think that's absolutely rubbish. <laughs> it's not what you're doing. It's happened. Sheffield United have won a game of football in the Premier League this season. Brilliant, Dave. I watched the game last night as well. and I, they, they, Well, I know Newcastle went down to 10 men, but before that, Sheffield United deserved to be one that looked before that. Lots of chances. Looked sort of somewhere back to last season. And I know it's a Newcastle side managed by Steve Bruce, who is uh, lambasted by the fans most week. But a win to win. Billy Sharp scores the goal. And could this be the start of the great escape? No. Oh. <laughs> Sorry to, to ruin everything. Uh, no, I can't see it. It's, they've still got a lot of work to do for me. They don't look as defensively sound as they did last season. I still think going forward, there's massive holes. They haven't changed how they attack. Yeah. There's too many issues for me. And obviously, they, they don't sit as far adrift anymore. They're, they're, they're clambering back onto Big Sam's West Brom. But Big Sam's West Brom are also in pretty poor form right now. So I think it's a bit too far for Sheffield United. But yeah. the big game against Spurs... Spurs are a very, very weird side this season. They've been brilliant in moments. They've been poor on others, like Everton, like many teams in the Premier League. But Son and Kane look back against Leeds. Kane with the first goal and then the great assist for Son at the back post for the second goal. That's got to be a threat for Sheffield United. Yeah, it has. But the, these are the games where I worry for Spurs the most because obviously everyone's talking about a low block. Might get the T-shirts printed. But I think against Sheffield United, 
that identity just goes out the window. So they need to be on the front foot. They need to be trying to break them down. And they've not been that convincing. I think about that Crystal Palace game. Mm. I know Gaeta had the game of his life, yeah. but... Burnley did, was another one with a one 0 win at the end. It does worry me, but I've got my fantasy football head, ha, I've got my fantasy football hat on. Yes, and I want some goals. You want some goals, okay? Let's let's take a look at your bet. You're on half time, full time Spurs over three goals for Spurs and Kane any time. I want Spurs to challenge for the Premier League this season, and if they're going to do it, they need to be convincing in games like this. Sheffield United obviously rock bottom of the table. Yeah, they got a win, but Sonny Kane in town. Obviously, Bale got some minutes. I know it was against Marine, but you've, we've all got to get minutes, Dave. We've all got um, to get minutes. But yeah, Kane to get maybe a set piece. A uh, bit tricky around the box, win a penalty. But yeah, I think it's going to be convincing. Convincing. I've kind of gone a similar thing, but I think it's going to be not, not as many goals. Okay. I've gone slightly different. I've gone Spurs to win the game, Son any time, and under 3.5 goals. And it's going to be a tighter affair. I think Sheffield United, uh, you know, they're, they're not as open as they were. Mourinho isn't as open as well going forward. You know, we talk about the game against Palace that they, they should have won, won one draw uh, in that thing. Look at Hume Son as well. He's just a man that is just in so much form right now. He's, the, you know, probably the form player of the Premier League. He's, he's breaking all sorts of expected goals, models. His conversion rate is ridiculous. I just think it's, it's just one of those runs for him. You know, we spoke about Ings and Vardy. Son is one of those players putting them in brackets. If they're through one on one on goal, you put your house on it. Yeah. Me, I've probably put my PS5 on it. That's that very is, important. That is, yeah, that is yeah. what I can hold close to my heart. So when he's through on goal, you just have, you just relax. You do, you do it. It's almost like it's already done. Uh, so human son maybe getting behind the Sheffield United back line at one one sort of moment. I could even see just a one nil Spurs. Uh, really boring game under three point five goals. Let's jump over to FST's bet builder for today. They've gone Spurs to win the game. Kane anytime, Son anytime. This is the FST bet this season. Right. It worked in twenty twenty and it's gonna work in twenty twenty one. It's a new year, but it's the same bet and the same results will happen. Now it's time for the big one, the game of the weekend. We've already done Wolves West Brom. We have, but we haven't done Manchester United versus Liverpool at Anfield wow. with Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's side, top of the Premier League. Yeah, uh, as I mentioned in the introduction, Dave, it's something that you've been banging on about for the two hours on mm. the train journey, the 30 minutes in the underground and the 15 minutes while we were outside waiting to come in. So um, if you'd like to talk some more about it, please do. Yeah, well, Manchester United, the top of the Premier League, having played 15 games plus for the first time since 2012-2013. Also looking in terms of the impact of certain players since the signing of Bruno Fernandes. He's been directly involved in 33 goals in 31 Premier League games and he's led Manchester United to be top of the Premier League. What an impact. It's the most least convincing, convincing side at the top of the Premier League after that amount of games. I think definitely in the last 10 years. Even when Leicester City were on top, I thought, you know, you can see where, where this is coming from. But United are doing what they've done of old. That Wolves game when they grinded out that victory last night against Burnley. They're doing, doing the dirty work. They're getting the wins. And then there's a few sort of spraying of um, big performances out here and there. Yeah, I wouldn't say collectively they've looked like the best they've played under Solskjaer. But like you're saying, they're, they're slow to get them through. And I do think the impact of Bruno Fernandes has just been absolutely massive in terms of the, the impact. You'd say he's, you know, it is like a Lionel Messi or a Ronaldo or a Lewandowski. You're looking in, you know, in, in 20, uh, 20, 21 season, you know, he's up there with those players in terms of direct goal involvements, goals and assists. Like, it, it has been that impact. But also Marcus Rashford as well, breath of fresh air. You speak about those two as well. I think, think back to that West Ham game. He left Fernandes out um, 2-0 down at half-time, Fernandez comes on, 3-2. And Marcus. And Marcus came yeah. on as well. So he knows he's, he's got a best 11 now and he's just got to keep him fit, keep him firing. And maybe, you know, I know you're not in the Champions League anymore, maybe that's a blessing in disguise. Maybe it is. Maybe the Europa League is where United really wanted to be. A yeah, night out in Gdansk um, in 2021 20, will be sensational. Talking about sensational, Liverpool haven't been sensational in recent weeks. No, sort of dropped off a cliff in terms of where they'd expect to be in terms of a title challenge and I mean I mean that's just part of this whole crazy Man United top of the league isn't it their, their form against that West Brom game as well where West Brom haven't done anything under Big Sam yet he managed to perform his low block and, and get the get the point there so I know the injuries have been bad but there's just some spark missing I think the, the impact of Virgil van Dijk you know we all know defensively and the, his ability to win duels was so important. Now, that's why they're so dominant. You know, they, they're attacking, he can go and win the ball back and they're attacking again. But his ability to, to spread the ball, 
I think it's been massively underrated. And now we're seeing the impact when, you know, when one of the centre halves comes in, you know, Phillips or Williams comes in, you're not seeing that same impact. Even when Jordan Henderson's playing there, you're not seeing that same ball spray. I think Fabinho's still really good in that position. Yeah. But I think he needs a partner. I think if John Matip is back for the weekend, that is going to be massive for Liverpool. I think a lot of people speak about the back line, and rightly so. But that front three, although they have been there and they have been present, it's just the chemistry doesn't seem the same. They're not as dominant no, as they have been. You wouldn't say they're as clinical when they get there. And the sort of the relationship between the three of them, even on the pitch, just, again, that's just something that the, the spark seems to have gone. Mm, maybe they need to just have a little bit of a you know, week, counselling. week or two counselling, you know. Mohammed, are you okay? Yeah, yeah exactly. Let's have a sit down, guys. Let's talk it through. What grievances have we got? Look, we want to win the Premier League together. Let's chat and get on with it. We're talking about chatting and get on with it. Let's jump into the bets. <laughs> so you've got Man United to win. Most goals in the second half and correct score 2-1. 20 to 1. This is why we brought you along, Will. Yeah, uh, big dog with a big prediction. So I've sort of gone through that cagey first half. And then it's sort of all to disintegrate as both. It's, it's interesting now that United are top by three points because Liverpool will need to get something from this. It's sort of United. If United got a draw away from home at Liverpool, that's absolutely fantastic. So I think that's where it will play into their hands, open up and Fernandes can pull the strings. Absolutely pulling the strings. Let's jump into my bet. I've not actually backed any team. I've sat right on the fence. I've gone Rashford any time, Salah any time. I think Rashford in this game could be massively important. We saw how Villa really attacked Liverpool's left-hand side with Ollie Watkins' runs from in to out, with Jack Grealish feeding him. And I think that's still a weakness for Liverpool. I really do. Uh, Papu Gomez, Atalanta, same type of thing in the Champions League in their 2-0 win at Anfield. Then that left-hand side is where Man United can get a Liverpool. But looking at Marcus Rashford, uh, excluding penalties, he's got the most goals since the start of December. Um, and also, he's now directly involved in 50 goals since the start of the last season in all competitions. 36 goals and 14 assists. Really in form right now. The goals and the, the stats are just making me want to put um, Rashford to score any time. Salah scored his first goal against United last season at Anfield. Penalties, probably an option. Yeah, I think that's the, the best bet for where, and I know obviously United are synonymous with getting penalties, but it might be the ultimate serendipity if well, Salah well, was... Well, hold on. Man United have got the most penalties in the Premier League since VAR was introduced, Yeah, which means it's to... refereed on video and it's yep. you know, given a correct decision. Liverpool have had the most penalties in Premier League history. So who's... Just, yeah, you know. Yeah, I don't yeah, want to fight yeah, with you, yeah, but right. yeah, 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 for me, just Salah's not clicking. Not sparking, not sparking. Let's jump into three super tips bet builder for this game. See if they've gone Liverpool, Man United, or they've Ooh. gone a draw. Wowzers, big Did, wowzers. Didn't see that coming. Liverpool to win, Salah to score any time, and Fernandez any time. Not something for me, Dave. Um, but you know, if you're a Liverpool fan, get on it. 11 to 1. This, the thing with Liverpool is this could be the game where they just click. I've got a, I've got a feeling that there's going to be a tie where everything comes back to that same high level. I can't see them consistently being as bad as they have been in recent years, recent years or in recent weeks. And that's just because their standards have been so high. Like it's not as if they're not playing, you know, they're not playing badly, they're just not playing exceptionally well as they usually do. So this could be the game where they fly. Salah's going to be a key component and you can see Fernandez grabbing a goal in such a big game. Yeah, definitely. I think we go back to set pieces as well. I mean, we speak about FPO. You want to get those people who were taking those set pieces and, and get them on there. You absolutely do. And that is Bruno Fernandes. Our penultimate game sees Manchester City face Crystal Palace. This is going to be a must win. If Pep Guardiola is serious about the Premier League title, yeah, got to get a result. There you have to. And I think, I mean, we go back to that famous game. It was it 3-2 to Crystal Palace, Andros Townsend with an absolute humdinger. Uh, I don't see that happening in this game as well. And some of the, although Crystal Palace have sort of solved it, I mean, I think Czech Coyote has been playing at centre-back as well, which a bit baffling, but you know, Roy knows what he's doing. Um, but I do think we speak about Liverpool needing it to click. Manchester City will click into gear in this game. It's a big, big game for Wolf Zaha. Yeah. May want to move in January. But he may want to move January this year. August transfer every transfer window he's one been uh, every transfer window he's been alleged to have been moving I just don't I just think he's there for the rest of his life 
fair. But is he in your bet for the rest of his life? Have you built a bet with Wilfred Zaha are in? Not touched him, mate. Uh, gone over three goals for Manchester City. De Bruyne did to score any time. Back to the set pieces. Obviously, De Bruyne on free kicks and finally scoring penalties. And over three goals, I think it's going to be a very convincing win. City have been very good at home this season. Um, you know, you think of the recent results. The Burnley 5 0 could be another one it's like the, that. The Chelsea is one as well, Dave. Sorry to jump in. Yeah, it? no, that that was a cracking performance. And that, again, that's sort of where you think Pep has found this new system where De Bruyne was playing as a false nine or something. Mm. Um, so ever since then I've just been a bit more convinced by Man City they, have, they did look good in that game I thought the rotation was good the midfield structure was good the full backs were important they performed really well so it's going to be interesting to see whether they can open up Palace the same way they did Chelsea in terms of my bet I'm also back in Manchester City I think this is just a game for Pep Guardiola gone Sterling any time nice it's true a bit of form starting to play a bit better the Got goals you. are there aren't they the, from... the goals are going to, going to, are going to come um, perform well against Chelsea. Both teams to score as well. Still feel there'll be, a, be an option. Maybe Christian Benteke. Maybe Wilfred Zaha. Maybe Karate from the back, from centre-half scoring from a set-piece. I think there is a goal here for Crystal Palace. Let's finish things off for this game. Free Super Tips bet builder. Let's dive into what they've got. They've got Man City to win to nil. And City goals over 3.5. It's quite convincing. I think they're sort of going down the same line as me, Dave. And finally, Arsenal versus Newcastle. Arteta oh, seemed to have found a bit of a solution to all of his problems. With Smith Rowe? Bang. That's why we worked together so well. This is why. This is why. He's looked good. A link in number 10. Looks like he presses. He engages as soon as the ball's lost. He's got a relationship with Saka that's provided some good quality going forward. Yeah. Is that I Arsenal sorted? Uh, not sorted, Dave. Nowhere near it. But I mean, it's plugged a few holes, and I think we've had the dress rehearsal in the FA Cup game that did go to extra time. But it wasn't until Smith Rowe came on that things started to look lively for Arsenal. So, just play your players that are in form, Arteta. That's mm. what I'd say to you, sir. I think the big thing for me with Smith Rowe is he wears his socks like Rui Costa. Right, nice. Um, you know, obviously a, a big inspiration. Got to be careful with that, though. Got to be careful. Safety first for me. Um, <laughs> but that's getting away from the bet. Let's dive into the bet straight away. You're back in Arsenal, as that year they did in the FA Cup. We've got Arsenal, half-time, full-time and three goals for Arsenal. I mean, this is based on a little bit of Arsenal renaissance, but also based on the fact that I watched Newcastle against Sheffield United and Sheffield United looked like a prime Man City. Uh, <laughs> Newcastle just looked shot to pieces. Obviously, they've had everything going wrong uh, with COVID and they've got a full-strength team and even the players that are back, you don't know sort of the long-term effects on that. But with even all that out the window, I mean, we spoke about sides that we like to watch this season. Newcastle would not be on that list. Taken off the list, stricken off. I've also gone Arsenal to win and also to win to nil. I do think with that, without St Maximum, they are a poor side going forward, Newcastle. I agree with you there. There was a little bit of a spell when you had Jolinton playing with Callum Wilson. Now it looks like they're not playing as a pair. One's on the wing. It just doesn't look good. I've also gone Lacazette any time. In terms of Lacazette, he's got the third best XG of any striker since the start of December. I like that little since the start of December. That's the data set at the moment. So Lacazette is looking hot in front of goal and I expect him to grab another one against a bit of a wayward Newcastle side. Let's jump into free super tips. Bet builder as well and see what they've gone with. They've gone Arsenal to win to, to nil under 2.5 goals and Laka any time. Yeah, I think that, I mean, I've gone sort of the other way with the, with the, with the three, but I think Arsenal are going to win and it's going to be convincing. And, I mean, you speak about Lacazette being fantastic with the old XG there, Dave. I think if it comes to Newcastle, it just seems to be, if it's not working, get Andy Carroll on for 10 minutes and hope for a goal. And if that's your method, I do worry about them. Well, that has been Bet Builders. We've built a lot of bets today. If you want to get involved in any of those bets, please gamble responsibly. Will, thank you for coming on to the show today. Where can the people find you? Um, you can find me on the streets of Manchester doing my daily walk, or you can find me on Twitter at Will Brazier. Wonderful. Now we know about where you walk. It's going to be... Yeah, yeah. Come say hello. Come say hello. But anyway, guys, thanks for checking out Bet Builders on Free Super Tips. Subscribe if you're new. Like the video and we'll be back again for some more Bet Building. <laughs>